All right, welcome everyone back to History for the Ages. I just saw the Oppenheimer movie, and now I'm ready to kind of give a review of the movie. So uh, for those of you who have not seen the movie yet, I already made a kind of a short video giving some basic historical background. If you just want a little bit of information before you go in, a five-minute video, um, that's gotten just kind of some basic historical things about the Manhattan Project and Oppenheimer himself. This is specifically going to go into the movie, um, so maybe if you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm going to talk about the very specific events in the movie, and then are they accurate, not accurate, to give you kind of a hist history professor's view of the movie and what they did well and uh, overall. Now, I'll say overall, it was an amazing movie. It was excellent. It was really well done. It really kept to the history incredibly well. Uh, I even liked it more than Dunkirk, uh, another one of uh, Christopher Nolan's movies uh, that's history-based, World War II as well. So let me just kind of get, get right into it and talk about some of the things that you may have seen in the movie and you're wondering, did that actually happen or not? Uh, so here we go. Uh, so one thing already people are asking is, did he actually try to poison his tutor? And apparently the answer to that is yes. Um, Oppenheimer apparently told one of his friends uh, that he didn't like his tutor and he did put some sort of chemical in an apple. I think they specified in the movie. I didn't even catch it was so quick what, what they used in the movie. Um, it wasn't quite as dramatic as him, you know, pulling the apple out of his hand in the last second and all that. Uh, but he did put something in there that, you know, I don't know if it would have killed him or made him really sick, but it was part of what, you know, Oppenheimer was like. And it kind of captures his personality a bit. Uh, another question that people have asked, did Einstein really meet with FDR? Because that's in the movie where they talk about Einstein meeting FDR to convince him to build a nuclear bomb. And the answer to that is absolutely yes. And also, it wasn't just Einstein. I think I really appreciated how they captured that so many of the people working on the project, including Oppenheimer, realized how important it was to build this bomb before the Nazis did it. You know, basically the movie starts early in the movie. They, they see this, you know, moment where they get information that, you know, the, they were able to split the atom and they're like, oh, the physics of the light clicked. It's like, OK, why, why are you doing this? You're doing this to build the bomb. And, you know, that was something that was also accurate. A big part of the movie, of course, was the whole issue of, you know, Oppenheimer's loyalty and ties with communism um, and his relationships with people. And again, they did a really good job capturing the accuracy of that, that, yes, he was connected with many people who were, you know, supportive of communists, including the lady he had a relationship with um, who was in the Communist Party. But he himself was always loyal to the United States. You know, I think that's something that's really important. And it was captured in the in the movie well that, you know, he was, you know, a complex man, that he had all sorts of ideas and listened to all sorts of things, but his loyalty to the US was always there. Uh, so that's I think something that they did really well also. Um, another thing that people ask is were they really worried that they were gonna set the whole atmosphere on fire? And the answer to that is yes as well. Um, and so and that was something that that actually did was a concern that they could actually do that. But of course, you know, the, the science showed that wouldn't happen. Uh, all the timelines, the dates, you know, were were accurate. All the people, the characters, the uh, all of those were real folks who were involved. The the generals, the uh, Strauss guy, you know, was you know played really well. Uh, you know, not being the the, the best uh, soul in the world there, he was not a very good guy and all of that. And so that was captured really well as also. And one of the things I really appreciated, I think a lot about the movie was the nuanced discussions they had about using the bomb, right? And where the bomb would be used. Um, there was one thing they kind of just threw in there. Uh, there's a scene in there where Henry Stimson, who's the secretary of war at the time, said, oh, I'm sparing this one city, Kyoto, because he had a honeymoon there. That was just, I don't know why they put that in the movie. There was actually no no evidence of that actually happening. Uh, but there was a lot of discussion in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And, you know, in the case of Nagasaki, especially, that was, you know, a, a large military port there. Um, and that was one of the reasons that city was picked. And, you know, it was just all the, you know, what would happen if we don't use the bomb? Would Japan have surrendered? The, the, the notion that Truman as president of the United States had to, you know, his number one job as president of the United States is to protect American soldiers. And one of the things I can tell you just, I've had a chance to meet many World War II vets and many World War II vets 
you know, that I've spoken to in the past said, yeah, when they heard the atomic bomb went off, they were happy because then they never had to do an invasion in Japan. There was a planned invasion, Operation X Day as opposed to D Day, um, and it never happened. Um, you know, and so then they also, are you doing the bomb just to, you know, impress upon the Soviets that what we can have and what we can do? And the answer to that is also yes. And I think it, it captured everything. And that's one of the things that was really, uh, I think, important in the movie. It didn't kind of give them one biased view of it. It was just kind of the reality of the discussions that they were having. Um, and he was, you know, Oppenheimer in the movie did lose his uh, clearance, security clearance. One thing they didn't mention in the movie, it's not wrong, they just didn't mention it, uh, was that he did get the clearance back. But I guess they didn't mention it because it didn't happen long after he died. He didn't get the official clearance back till 2022. Um, and there's another scene in the movie where Truman, he's having a conversation with Truman, and right after the conversation, you know, Truman basically calls him a crybaby, and apparently Truman did make that reference to Oppenheimer, but not, like, right in front of him or as he was leaving. It was something he kind of said to an aide a bit later. Uh, so, you know, there was some Hollywood stuff in there, of course, that they, they kind of put difference. One thing I haven't, you know, been able to pinpoint, somebody asked me about, did they have this Einstein and Oppenheimer, did they meet? Did that kind of lake area and talk? And I don't know if that, I know Oppenheimer and Einstein met and they did say, oh, I knew him from a long time ago and that's true. Um, uh, but in terms of those specific conversation that I don't know how accurate that is or not. Um, you know, overall also that, you know, were there spies in the Manhattan Project? Yes, there were. And so that was something that, that was accurate. It was part of the, the situation as well. Um, you know, another thing that they didn't really get into the movie, but just something to think about is that, you know, if Oppenheimer didn't create the atomic bomb, would somebody else have, you know, if you didn't have the Manhattan Project? And I think probably the answer to that is yes. It's like, you know, it's, it's the same thing with like this AI technology that we have today and people are worried about it in the movie, you know, does talk about, you know, the, the danger of all these atomic bombs um, and also the concept of, you know, I grew up in the 80s, mad, mutual assured destruction that because both sides have it, no one uses it. Um, and, and so you never know with technology. The technology is always there. And throughout human history, I think, you can't really stop the train of technology. It's up to us as human beings to use the technology for the right reasons and the right times and in the right way. And, you know, you can use nuclear power for nuclear energy or you could use a bomb for, you know, ending World War II or you could use it for many other reasons. So I think that's kind of an uh, important point to keep in mind. There's, I don't think there's a way to stop the technology. It's just kind of there. It's up to us as humanity how to deal with the technology well. But overall, the movie was great. Um, it is definitely rated R. You know, there's you know there's a bit, bit of nudity in there, a lot of language, of course, um, in the movie. So anybody who's got younger kids definitely you know might want to think about all that. Uh, but I really enjoyed the movie. I think it's it was done overall really well. A lot of the things you see in there are very accurate. Uh, and definitely, they would definitely recommend it if you're into history or just want to learn about this guy, Oppenheimer. It is a three hour movie, but it doesn't feel like it. And it also, just so you know, it kind of jumps chronologically. So, you know, for me, it was pretty easy to follow because I know the history. But I think for people who are like, what's going on here? What's happening? I think it does help to have a little bit of historical background. So, again, you may watch the other video I made already, just kind of the history background on it. That could help as well. But anyways, that's it. That's my two cents as a history professor watching Oppenheimer. You know, hope that helps clears up some things you may have seen uh, in the movie. And that's it. Everyone have a great day. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.